On behalf of the University, I'm delighted to welcome you here to our congregation for the conferment of degrees here in the Barony Hall. Uh, it's delightful to see so many visitors who came to join us from, from near and from far. And I think also some of our graduates have been engaged online, and this might also be your first time in the University, so a very warm welcome. Graduations are, are key dates in the University calendar. Uh, they are days of celebration for our graduates, for their family and friends, but also for, for the staff of the University. Uh, and this time, um, this week for graduations, this is the first graduation ceremonies that we've held for, for two years because of the pandemic. And we're absolutely delighted to be back here where we can publicly recognize the wonderful achievements of our graduates. Now, in a few moments, it will be my privilege to cap each of our graduates as their name is called out and they'll come up on stage to receive their awards. The graduates will stand before me and I will raise the graduation cap above their head, thereby conferring their degree, and thereafter they will collect their parchment and return to their seats. Uh, I will use the graduation cap to do this, which has um, its roots in ancient China, and it's recognized as a rite of passage and as a mark of achievement. And for each of our graduates, once they've been capped, they're now part of a community of scholars at the University of Strathclyde, which can stretch back over 200 years to the Scottish Enlightenment. At the close of graduation, we have a reception in our new learning and teaching building, which everyone is invited to come along to celebrate and have some refreshments. We also hope to have an academic procession from the Barney to the new learning and teaching building. This will depend upon the weather, which is looking pretty good just now, so we'll keep our fingers crossed that that is uh, going to be okay at the end of the ceremony. In the meantime, um, I do hope that you enjoy the ceremony. I'm now directing my attention to everyone beyond our graduates. And when you see your loved ones come on stage to receive the reward, please feel free to celebrate, to shout, clap your hands, stamp your feet. These are occasions of celebration, so please, please make the most of it. I now formally declare that this congregation for the conferment of degrees is open, and I invite Professor Ian Rivers, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Humanities, and social sciences to present our graduates to receive their awards. Thank you. Vice Principal, in the name of the university and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students for the degree of Master of Science in Genealogical, Paleographic, and Heraldic Studies. Kerry, Kelly Allen. <laughs> Jennifer Day G. Banks. Katrina Hain. Karen Rhiannon Lowen. In clinical health psychology, Lauren Caroline Coleman. Siobhan Caitlin Call. Robin Tony Copeland. Nicola Audrey Doyle. Daisy Jean Hagen. <laughs> Miriam Hashim. <laughs> Ms. 
Rebecca Hines. <laughs> Shannon Hodgson. <laughs> Kanza Hussein. Mariam Ibram. <laughs> Mary Jamshidi. <laughs> Eva Sarah Jardine. Vicky Jordan. <laughs> Chloe Kennedy. <laughs> Jennifer Carr. Cameron Khalid. <laughs> Lana Kokashvili. <laughs> Ruth Finn Lizer. <laughs> Jessica Lynch. Amy Jean McDonald. <laughs> Anisha Francis Main. <laughs> Gillian Mayer. <laughs> Amy Malloy. Laura Olivia Matheson. <laughs> Flora Elizabeth McCartney. <laughs> Rachel McCartney. <laughs> Stephanie McElwee. Megan Rose McGibbon. <laughs> Caitlin Meekin. Yeah. Laura Mochum. <laughs> Sharon Louise Murray. Louise Amanda Gronborg Neal. <laughs> Anne Catherine O'Brien. <laughs> Beth Patterson. Lauren Patterson. Danielle Grace Riley. Claire Jane Rennie.
Isabel Maria Saez Baruga. Carly Ann Sandu. Sarah Scarfo. Hayley Smith. Leah Catherine Scott Statham. <laughs> Helena Jasmine Stewart. <laughs> Joe Tamburini. Andrew Watson. <laughs> Rebecca Jane Weir. <laughs> Jessica McPherson Wiley. Natalie Marie Young. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, and most of all, Strathclyde University's newest graduates, it is my pleasure to once again welcome you to our graduation ceremony here in the Barony Hall. Quite rightly, our graduates have been centre stage, and I would like to begin my address by congratulating all of you once again on your achievements. Your hard work and effort has paid off, and you've now graduated in front of your families, friends, and the staff who taught and supported you during your time at the university. Very well done indeed, and let's all give our graduates a big round of applause. <laughs> now, in a short while, at the close of graduation, you may be asked to join the academic procession as this leaves the Barony Hall, depending upon the weather. This invitation actually symbolizes the fact that you are no longer students. You are now full members of the academic community of Strathclyde, a worldwide community that numbers over 180,000 individuals. You will now join such esteemed company as David Livingston, the missionary and explorer, John Logie Baird, who invented television, Dame Ailish Angelini, Scotland's first female Solicitor General and Lord Advocate, Helen Liddle and Baroness Annabel Goldie, leading Scottish politicians, and the entrepreneur and philanthropist Sir Tom Hunter. Today, we are celebrating our first in-person graduation ceremony since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. And this has had far-reaching and unprecedented impact on all of our lives. The pandemic has challenged our health systems, has impacted on our economies, and it's changed the way in which we work and the way in which we study. However, it's also demonstrated what society can achieve when we work together, and it has placed science at the forefront 
of finding the solutions to the challenge. It was science and universities that delivered vaccines for the COVID-19 virus in record time. And it is science, engineering, social sciences and education that will help us address other pressing issues, such as climate change. Earlier this month, Glasgow hosted COP26, the summit of world leaders which came together to agree measures to minimise global warming and climate change. As a university community, we are very aware of our responsibilities to reducing our impact on the planet, which is why we have set a target to reduce our carbon emissions by 70% 70, 70 by 2025 and to reach net zero before 2040. COP26 also saw US President Barack Obama visit Strathclyde to speak with our students about the important role that young people will play in tackling climate change. The former president had a simple but powerful message for those who had gathered outside our new learning and teaching building, pausing on the steps, he said to everyone, to get active. Now to our graduates, in reaching this point today, each of you will have benefited from the active support of your families, friends and supporters, and academically through your lecturers, tutors and supervisors. Many are here celebrating today because you carry with you their hopes, their wishes and their confidence for a successful career. For the past 15 minutes or so, their applause has rung in your ears as you each in turn cross this stage to receive your awards. I would now like to invite our graduates to show their appreciation for all the support that they have received from their family, friends and supporters. Your success, and in turn our success as a university, is in no small part due to the efforts of our staff, who are delivering our vision as a leading international technological university that is socially progressive. You can tell a lot about the values of an organisation by looking at its roots. Strathclyde University traces its lineage back to 1796, when Anderson brought it into being, the only Scottish university founded during the Age of Enlightenment and embodying the Enlightenment principles of reason, tolerance and equality. Anderson's belief in useful learning and his commitment to taking knowledge and using this for the greater good is the motivating force which gives Strathclyde University its momentum today. Anderson believed in knowledge for the greater good and participation for all, what we would call widening access and participation. Strathclyde University is at the forefront of widening access to higher education by welcoming those with the ability to learn regardless of personal circumstances. And 20% of our new students each year come from the most challenging areas of the country. Our ethos of useful learning continues to be relevant today as we seek new knowledge that can be readily applied to the challenges. We are a research intensive university determined to make a positive difference to the lives of our students, to society and to the world. Through our groundbreaking research, we are helping to change the world from the better. Through our scientists, engineers and social scientists, we are leading the development of innovative technologies that will facilitate this transition from fossil fuels to clean, sustainable sources, such as wind, solar, geothermal, and hydrogen. We are developing new drugs along with new manufacturing processes that will provide cheaper, more effective treatments in the fight against cancer, kidney disease, and inflammatory disease, whilst also supporting our health service to face the challenges of health and social care in the changing demographics of the 21st century. Through our focus on entrepreneurial education, we are helping students and staff to create new sustainable businesses as well as supporting economic growth. We are also revitalising this part of the city through the Glasgow City Innovation District, attracting companies to work with the university and health technologies, financial technologies, 5G communications, industrial informatics and space and quantum applications, much of which is based within our technology and innovation centre. And we are growing Scotland's manufacturing capabilities and the Advanced Manufacturing Innovation District Scotland out at Glasgow Airport, 
where the Na National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland is hosted by Strathclyde and is under development. Our globally minded students and staff are also working in sustainable development and helping to address some of the inequalities in India, Malawi and the Gambia by establishing clean water supplies, renewable power sources and healthcare facilities. We understand the value of working in partnership as we extend our global reach with other leading universities, including Stanford, New York University, MIT, Caltech, Chinua, and the National University of Singapore. As a university, we are continually working to enhance our student experience, investing in our campus, as evidenced by a new Strathclyde Sports Building and our new Learning and Teaching Building. And we are investing in mental health and wellbeing support services and placing our students at the heart of everything that we do. Our progress in these areas has been recognised in recent years, and we are the only UK university to win the Times Higher Education University of the Year twice, having won this accolade again in 2019. In recent times, we have been named the Business School of the Year, Workplace of the Year, and Research Project of the Year. And earlier this year, the Times Higher placed Strathclyde University fourth in the UK for student satisfaction out of 150 institutions. Research in the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences on intelligent sensing and telepresence robotic technology is working to enable health practitioners to remotely access a person's physical and cognitive health from anywhere in the world. Other research on subjects including island communities and the impact of COVID-19 is helping to inform and shape government policy. The Centre for Lifelong Learning's Master's Programme in Genealogical, Paleological and Heraldic Studies is one of the largest postgraduate programmes which is online in the country, with over 260 students. The Centre's massive open online course in Geological Studies, which is delivered through FutureLearn, has attracted over 110,000 learners in the past five years. In Psychological Sciences and Health, Dr. Megan Crawford and Dr. Leanne Fleming are being funded by Brain Research UK to support chronic migraine sufferers to improve sleeping patterns. And students from today's graduating cohort of the MSc in Clinical Health Psychology have successfully developed Collective Perspective, an online magazine directed towards improving psychological literacy. Now, these are just some of the many contributions that are being made by our students and our staff. And Strathclyde is being increasingly recognised as a place where things happen. And this is why our graduates are so highly prized by companies and organisations who are looking to recruit the best talent to drive their businesses forward. Our success is no small part due to the collective efforts, talents and commitment of our staff. The 4,000 colleagues who deliver our vision as a leading international technological university and like me, they are very proud of your achievements. All of our students learn how to be innovative, enterprising and creative, and they can make a real difference when they go out into the workplace. So wherever your career takes you, always remember that as a Strathclyde graduate, useful learning carries with it responsibilities that go beyond academic scholarship. And finally, let me offer my sincerest congratulations to you all once again on your achievements, and I hope that you enjoy the remainder of what is a very special day. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, that now concludes the formal part of uh, the graduation ceremony. Uh, and I'd like to remind you that we have a reception in our nearby learning and teaching building, which everyone is invited to come along. I've looked at the back of the hall and I've had a big thumbs up, which says the weather has stayed good enough that we can actually process from the barony over to the learning and teaching building. And I'll take this opportunity to invite Strathclyde University's newest graduates to join the academic procession. And if I could ask, ladies and gentlemen, for you to remain in the hall until we process out the main door and then immediately follows over to the learning and teaching building and we shall see you there for some refreshments. I now formally declare that this congregation 
for the confirmation of degrees is closed. Please be upstanding.